As a kid, I was always helping out the field. Me and my brother were always helping my dad. We were always in the tractors. We were always walking fields. It's sort of all we know, so to go to farming just seemed like the natural next step. Right now you're in a field of great northerns. What you'll see with these plants is that they're starting to flower and they start forming pin pods. So we're actually getting, I'll just grab a plant here. We're actually getting the beans to start forming on these plants. This is also the time where diseases come in. So this is usually where we get your first uh, fungicide application. So these have been sprayed. Once they get around that 20-30% flowering, these little flowers here, that's usually when you want to get into your fungicides because you really want to protect these plants and what they're going to go through for the next couple weeks. These beans so far are faring really well. We can expect roughly 3,000 pounds for yield out here. I think we'll get it on this field. We've had the, a little bit of the hail damage on this field, but I don't think it'll affect the yields at all. And so far I don't have any disease, but we're expecting it to come here soon because it always seems to show up in a week or two. I actually live in farm in Bow Island, which is actually the bean capital of Alberta. So it's definitely one of the areas where beans thrive. It's one of the best crops we could grow in our area and it's great for rotations. They're profitable and they really love the heat. So Bow Island's a very hot area. So we've got an awesome climate for beans. The crops that are grown here that aren't in other parts of the province, well, we've got the sugar beets I grow are very rare to southern Alberta. Mint, dill, catnip, tarragon, it's all in southern Alberta. There is some onions grown somewhat nearby as well. The irrigation has helped out Bow Island dramatically. Just the crops here are not possible without irrigation at all. We turn it on and off whenever we want. You couldn't ask for something better, really. I'm constantly checking the fields and we're constantly checking soil moisture. Some of our fields, we have actually probes in the field with solar panels sending us data to our cell phones so we can see just how dry that field is just to be super accurate. Most of our fields are done by hand still and we turn on these pivots when we need the water and every crop is different. The trickiest thing about beans would probably be the mold issues. The mold and mildew just seems to show up with our irrigation, so a lot of it is managing the irrigation correctly. So as farmers, we are always trying to be sustainable and always trying to be better than sustainable, to be honest with you. We're not just trying to sustain our crops and keep things the way they are. We want to be better every single year. We need the land to do well and we need the land to be productive as possible and we need it to be productive for a long time. So if we're not doing the best we can for our land, well, where are we going to be in 10 years? There we go. Yesterday in our area, we had a hailstorm wipe out roughly 70% of our crops. Some of the fields are completely wiped out. There's nothing salvageable there. We'll have insurance adjusters come in and tell us what our next steps are. As of right now, uh, a lot of fields just look, well, they look like crap, but they're completely destroyed. So, Right now we're in our Mayakoba field that was hit with hail yesterday. Uh, it's completely wiped out. So there's literally nothing left but some sticks. Probably just plant some winter wheat. Hopefully get it in early so the land doesn't blow later on. Yeah, it's 100% uh, damaged, so completely wiped out. Last year we had drought and this year we got hail. So we get a real mixed bag here in Southern Alberta. And you really have to love what you're doing. You have to love planting the crops and watching them grow. And the majority of the time you get to harvest that crop and that's really what we're looking forward to every time, is just being optimistic and trying our best. And the future of farming, I hope to see better genetics always coming down the pipeline and new crops. Nothing's more exciting than seeing a new crop show up in our area. An example would be when lentils and peas started coming in. A few years ago, hemp started coming in. There's lots of opportunities in this area. I wouldn't say I necessarily chose to farm. I've always farmed my whole life, and it's what I've always known.